So imagine this, you're in the mortgage industry and rates have gone up and things are slowing down a little bit. Like what would you do if I told you that there was another way to create some business out there and it's through renovation loans. So whether that's somebody who is in their property and they couldn't find the ideal dream home, but they'd like to make some changes to their individual property, or it's somebody whose property is listed and you could come alongside them and help them to position that a little bit differently in the buyer's eyes. That's what you're going to learn about as you meet my friend, Trey Perry. Well, Trey Perry, how are you and welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. I am, I am very, very well. So how about yourself? I'm really good, man. I'm really, really good. It's, uh, it, it's, it's always fun to be able to talk to somebody who has a niche, you know, or, or for the, for the highly educated and affluent people, a niche because <laughs> right in our industry, in the mortgage industry, I just think it's so easy to get into this sort of sense of, well, I can do anything for anybody, anywhere, anytime. It's an easy, it's much like real estate, right? Like I can serve anybody anywhere, anytime. And the risk in that, as I'm sure you know, is that if you really do become that, you're a generalist and you're probably driving more than you want to drive. And you probably don't have quite as much information on every single one of those products as you'd like. And so when I see somebody that doubles down with veterans or physicians or, you know, whatever the, the, the thing might be reverse. I just always think that's fascinating. And so your name came to me as the renovation guy. And man, what I know is we got a lot of real estate that needs to be renovated. We got a lot of people with a lot of needs and desires that might not include selling. So, so with that said, but we don't need to go all the way back into your, you know, bio and history and all that, but I would like to know, like, how did this first get on your radar screen? How did you even start thinking about renovation loans? So um, it was actually about 15 years ago. And I it was real funny. I was listening to the podcast that you just did with uh, Grant Schneider yeah. uh, out in Colorado. And Grant was talking about that he had been in the business uh, back in 08, 09, when the, first, when the first crash happened. And so he had talked about how he had doubled down and, kind of divorced all of his real estate agents except his uh except his wife um so well the same kind of thing kind of happened to me except you know he talked about how he didn't really have a a, a niche product or something that he could go and talk to his yeah. real estate partners about and what i found out happened was the company that i was working for had renovations and all of a sudden i, I had sent like three deals out to this person in Greensboro and you know I wasn't getting any credit for it I wasn't you know I was getting right. paid a, a pittance as far as a referral fee goes and so I, I went to my boss at the time and said hey do we not have somebody here locally that that I could do this with and they said no and so I sat there for a second and I said I'm going to change that so nice a week later I went to my uh, training down in Atlanta, Georgia, and as they say, the rest is the rest is history. So I've been a renovation specialist uh, for about fifteen years. You know, the thing that makes me so happy about it is I, I don't have to know about every product that exists in the market. Absolutely, Today, I've got uh, I've got five products that uh, you know that I typically run with. So. Yep. I tell people all the time, I wouldn't know how to originate a traditional loan if my life depended on it. I'm not going to bet the farm or anything along those lines on uh, having, uh, you don't want to bet the farm on me originating a, a, tra a traditional loan for you. Yeah. So I love the expertise. I love the focus I, more than, you know, I mean, this to, this to me is always just a, a very exciting conversation when somebody really does double down in one particular lane and, so, so here's what I'd like you to do, because you're talking to a lot of people in the mortgage business right now who know of renovation loans, they know of two, 203Ks, they know of rehabs, they, they, they know that they're out there, but they've probably never done one or, or they've stumbled across or that like you, they referred it out and either weren't fairly compensated or weren't compensated at all. So it might just be something that's rattling around in their head, but let, let's talk to a 
I mean, here's where my head goes. You have a loan originator right now that is watching us or listening to us who is thinking about their personal property as we're starting to have this conversation, right? Because that's a deeply personal thing. We, I think we all get into our homes at the point that we close escrow or, you know, we get the keys depending on where you land, uh, live in the country and, and you move in and you got all these great plans, right? And then a lot of that stuff gets deferred, right? For a variety of reasons. And the kitchen never really gets redone and that bathroom still needs to be remodeled and those cabinets really need to be redone. And boy, a pool really would be great in the backyard or whatever, but that stuff never happens. Talk to people about where this all begins. Like, like somebody who's just dreaming a little bit, like where do you start that conversation with them? So, I mean, the average home buyer when they close on the house in that first 12 months that they're going to be in their new home um, they are going to spend anywhere from 20 to thirty thousand dollars of their own money on a variety of things you know you get in and your spouse says i don't like the color of the kitchen yep. you get in and all of a sudden you know the roof is 20 years old and it's only a 25 year roof. Right. So it passed the appraisal, it passed the home inspection, but all of a sudden you've got a leak in the upstairs bathroom. So the average person is going to spend somewhere between 20 and $30,000 just on a variety of things, bringing the house into the 21st century. Most people would tell you if it's not new construction, you're going to walk in and you're going to go, there are some things that I, I want to change immediately. For sure. So this product you know, this product allows them instead of spending their own money or going out and getting a, you know, a Lowe's credit card at 23%. Absolutely. Oh, please, you know, man. Yeah. Even if you're borrowing money from me at seven, you know, yep. I'm, still, I'm still a better deal than the Lowe's credit card at Oh my goodness, yes. So plus I'm going to let you do a whole lot more uh, with that because that's right. really outside of true luxury, types of renovations, um, like putting a spa in your backyard. Yeah. Uh, there's really not much that we can or can't do that. I mean, honestly and truly, I mean, we've done some crazy renovations over the years. Well, give, give, me, give me an example. Just let, let people hear some crazy renovations. What's that look like? I, I built the helicopter pad. Okay. For I, was, I didn't see that uh, one coming. Got to be honest. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've actually built the helicopter pad for a gentleman uh, in the mountains of North Carolina who had a two mile access road into his house and it was graveled, but it wasn't paved. Yeah. And so during the winter months, it was, it was nearly impossible for him to get access to his house, but he did have access to a helicopter. I built him a helicopter. Pad. That's so hysterical. I've knocked four houses down completely, taking them all the way to the foundation and rebuilt them from the ground. Wow. So, okay, I did not know that was possible, and I'm sure it varies depending on the area you're in. Absolutely, but and actually, it depends on what the products you do. So, yeah. wow, that's amazing, man. That's amazing. Okay, so where does this all begin? You t so now you're picture yourself in a room with a hundred loan originators, and they're listening to you, a 15 year expert, and you're like, okay, so here's where you got to start. Like, I'm assuming you're going to start with you got to know your product. So depending on what company somebody is with you need to know guidelines and parameters and but educate people where would you where would you tell them to begin the biggest thing is that you know what i would tell people is that typically the rules don't change just because you move into reno and that's one of the greatest things that an lo you know a loan officer can do right now it doesn't change so for instance if you're asking for pay stubs and bank statements and w2s and all the things that we would normally ask for from a normal customer, well, those things don't change just because you come to Reno. Yeah. You know, I would challenge each LO right now to go back and look at your pipeline, you know, talk to your real estate partners, you know, talk to your referral partners. Because if you've pre qualified somebody for $400,000 house, a $400,000 house, just as an example, yeah. And your real estate partner is showing them $400,000, there, everybody's probably frustrated because they're having to overbid to win the offer on the house. Yep. Uh, there's still stuff, there's still that 20 to $30,000 that's gonna need to be done uh, to make the house up to what they want. You and, you know, the chances are is that 
they may not win the house. Yeah. So stop showing them four hundred thousand dollar houses. Have the realtor partner go out and show them three hundred and thirty thousand dollar houses. So smart. It's going to let them overbid and you know potentially win the deal. Plus, they're going to have a, a pot of money to make the house what they want it to be, and you get to be a hero. You know, that, I mean, that's so smart, Trey. I, I mean, I know this is obvious to you, but I've just never thought about that before, and yet it makes complete sense. Like, why not just lower lower that price a little bit where you're looking? And then imagine, like like my wife always says when she looks at real estate, you've heard the expression a million times, but she said, that house has great bones, right? So if you got a house with great bones, but it's like, yeah, but that 1980s kitchen and the avocado, you know, refrigerator is not really cutting it for me. Like dream, dream a little bit, build, build what you want. So the first thing is, is avocado colored appliances are coming back. That's what I heard. I know that's uh, true. And yeah. so the other thing that you can kind of keep in mind when you're when you're talking to folks about this is that, again, it, it doesn't replace the twenty to thirty thousand dollars. But what I typically tell my real estate partners is I'm there to take care of the butts. Yeah. You know, we yeah. like we you know, when a customer comes out of a house, the real estate agent will typically say, well, what did you think? And they'll go, well, we liked everything about the house, but yeah. and it's everything yeah. after the word but. And so a real estate agent's first response is typically, okay, let's get back in the car and, you know, we'll go and, you know, we'll go look at the next one. And then the same conversation happens that we liked everything about the house. But so yeah. this product essentially allows the real estate agent to go, well, what if we can fix the butts? Exactly. You know? um, and so it's, less drive time, it's less time in the car, you know, looking at houses that are close, you know, but not quite what they want. Yeah. So, but again, the rules don't change. If you've pre-qualified a customer for $400,000, it doesn't change and go above $400,000 just because it comes to reno. Yeah, so that makes so much sense. The only additional piece that we need is we need an estimate from a contractor sure. to say, and Here's just the just one, by the way, or two? That's correct. That's okay. Just one. We we need an estimate that says this is you know this is the work that's going to be done. This is how much it's going to cost because we're going to give that estimate to the appraiser. Yeah. And then the appraiser is going to come back to us and say this is what the house is worth once the renovation loan is complete. Okay, so t so talk to the loan officer right now who's going to be talking to the borrower or somebody in their database or a friend or a neighbor or whoever it might be um, about their fear of material cost, contractor availability, just all that crazy COVID stuff that was going on and then post-COVID. Like, where are we right now? Are we, are, are we more normalized right now? I know lumber's still kind of out of whack, and it, but you tell me. We're getting closer to being where we were pre-COVID. Uh, we're not quite there yet, both yeah. in timing and in terms of cost. So, you know, I would tell you that two years ago, pre-COVID, my average cost of my projects were probably around about forty to forty-five thousand dollars. And I would probably say that my average project now is probably somewhere between. 55 and 60. So okay. it, I mean, it, it, is it more expensive? It is. But the good news is, is that values have kept up with that. So Absolutely. some of the things that we're going to immediately do is when the contractor presents us with that estimate, the first thing that we're going to do just right out of the gate is we're going to add a contingency. You know, your contingency is kind of like your, oh, for the oh crap moments. Right. Oh crap, we found this. You know, we yes. got to fix this before we can move forward. Yep. So that's what that's what the contingency fund is going to allow you to do. We build in some things to help protect the customer and the contractor uh, from running into problems. You know, once we've closed on that's the so smart. And is that a is that a percentage or how do you come up with that contingency figure? It actually depends on the utilities at the house. If the utilities okay. are on, then it's less than if the utilities are off. Um, it also depends on how big the project is. So, for instance, like 
if the project goes above a hundred thousand dollars, yeah, uh, which we have several <laughs> right now. I'm um, sure. If the projects are over a hundred thousand dollars, then it's typically going to be about a ten percent contingency. Okay. So a hundred thousand would become a hundred and ten, just boom, right off the bat. Yeah. If it's a lower amount, like I've got one that I entered in this morning where the work's only twenty thousand dollars, it's yep. probably going to be about a fifteen percent contingency at okay. that point. Just because, I mean, again, when you get into those lower projects, uh, the sure. chances of something coming up that's going to need to be taken care of yeah. are a little bit greater. Different question, but I just, as we're talking more, I do, these questions keep occurring to me, probably like they do with your borrowers. But what percentage of the time is it like right on the money? Like, yes, we borrowed 45 and we spent 45. You know, it. it you tell me. So actually, believe it or not, most of the time, I would probably say that I run about 95% or greater Wow, where uh, my numbers come in right where they're supposed to be. So, so cool. the, the good thing about the contingency is if you don't use the contingency or if your contractor does come in under budget, then you can do other things with that contingency money. So I tell, I tell people that this is how fences get built. Nobody ever includes fencing in the backyard. That's great. Um, man. They remember as they get towards the end. Oh, oh Lord, we forgot about the dogs. You know, right. the dogs don't have a place to run, so they use the contingency money to fence in the backyard. Yeah, that's fine. You're you're yeah. more than able to do that. If the contingency is over ten thousand um, dollars, which again we we have had some projects this year that have been more than that, you can actually the customer can pay three hundred dollars. And the loan will actually that that ten thousand dollars or greater contingency will be applied to the principal balance, and the loan will actually recast. That's so, so great. So the payment will will come down. That's so uh, great, so, so good, dude. I love that you know this stuff. People that are listening to this, that yeah, here's what I know is happening: somebody's heart rate is going up right now. You know what I mean? Like, wow. Okay, I I'm imagining possibilities, right? So, you're back in the classroom. You got a hundred LOs out there. What would your initial advice be to them? What, where, where would you have them begin? If you were training them to go start doing this right now, I mean, at the time that we're recording this, it's at the end of the year, they're going to be looking at, you know, Q1 2023 trade. You've been around this game. You made a lot of mistakes in the beginning, probably like most of us, and you probably are a little bit more dialed in right now. Help these people learn from your mistakes. What would, where would you have people begin? Find out what programs your company offers. Yeah. Again, the company that I work for currently has both the 203Ks, all three of the home style products, and we're one of the few lenders in the country that have uh, the VA renovation loan. Nice. So start with what your company does because yeah. there are some companies that don't offer the home style product at all, and there's some that only offer the 203K limited. And how is the, how is the home style different than the 203K limited? So, so the the 203Ks are the ones that most people know about. And yeah. Those are the ones that are the VA product. I mean, the FHA products. Right, right. Um, and then the home style is basically Fannie Mae's, Fannie Mae's answer to that product. Okay. So, but the nice thing about the home style product is you can do a primary residence. Uh, I've got a first time home buyers program. You can do a secondary residence and you can even do an investment property. That's very investment cool. property reno. I mean, wow. that that's unheard of. That but is unheard a, of. A lot of people who want to invest in real estate, they have the money. If they want to invest in real estate, they have the money for the down payment. But again, it goes back to, hey, I need twenty or thirty thousand dollars to fix it up. Well, this lets you do an investment property reno that. Yeah, man, that's, so, that's, that's money. And so for clarity, just so everybody knows, if you can't read his shirt, maybe you can read mine, but that's movement mortgage and that's awesome. So, uh, so sorry, I interrupted you. So, so start there know the products, know what's know, available. Know what products. And then, you know, find somebody within your company that does know the products like, like a specialist does. I mean, there are several people within our company that know this product and have a five minute conversation with the processing manager, yep. have a five minute conversation with a specialist just to make sure, because what I'm going to tell you is the biggest pitfall with renovations is 
you, you get that mindset of a traditional loan and you can't really get out of it. Yeah. So like, for instance, like on a traditional loan, you can submit the file into underwriting, request disclosures, order the appraisal and lock the rate all in yep. the same day or yep. whatnot. You can't do that with Rena because we're going to tell you, a specialist is going to tell you is you can't order the appraisal until you have the estimate in your hand. Yeah. Um, and you don't want to lock the interest rate until you have that estimate in hand. Because if you're locking something for 30 days, but you haven't selected a contractor, you're not closing in 30 days. Yeah. No, so, that makes sense. Of course. And then, I mean, again, the biggest thing that you can help your customer do is find that contractor, you know, help yep. them find that contractor who is, you know, able to give them that line item estimate because the contractor is going to drive the process. You bet. You know, the sooner we get a contractor, the sooner we get an estimate. The sooner we get an estimate, the sooner we order the appraisal. The sooner we order the appraisal, the sooner we're going to get a close. That's right. Plain and simple. So Really smart, man. So, and how about from a marketing perspective, when you think about, you know, here's, here's my opinion, and it's only my opinion. I've been in the business 30 years. I've been coaching for 20. I've coached a lot of really successful people. But when I picture that same room with 100 LOs, and I ask people before they kind of know where I'm going with it, like, hey, how many people are in your database? Most people will say to me two to 300. Highly effective producers tell me 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. And it's because, Trey, they view database differently, right? If, if all you think of is past borrowers, people that you've done loans for, and you've been in the business for eight years, it's like, well, so if I do five loans a month for eight years, it's like, you know, you could do the math on that. Sure. But if you start thinking about, yeah, but hang on, man. What about that guy I met at the softball game or this woman that I had a conversation with at church or this person that we met on the cruise ship? Like you suddenly begin to view your, your database very differently. And I mean, I got to imagine like nearly everybody in your database is a prospect. Nearly Absolutely. everybody, unless they Absolutely. live in a high rise in Manhattan and maybe even then. I don't know. So the good news is, is that you have a lot of people, you have a lot of people right now in your database that maybe wanted to move or thinking about moving. And the problem is, is that inventory, the reason why we're in a perfect storm for reno is because the inventory is still so low. Yeah. So one of the biggest differences between 08 when the first crash happened and 2022 is the fact that in 08, you know, if you go back and look at the numbers, the inventory was through the roof. We had oh my goodness, yeah, yeah, um, and we just don't have that now. And so, a lot of people in you know are getting frustrated because of the lack of inventory. Yeah. So they're saying, "Well, we'll just stay in place." Well, that's a perfect. I mean, I can do it. It doesn't have to be a purchase to do a reno. Um, Such a great and, point. So, and the the one of the best things. And, you know, if you take away nothing else from what I've said today, Bill, yeah. do this, the difference between a reno, because uh, a lot of people would say, oh, I'll just do a cash out. Yeah. Well, the problem, with, not the problem, but the limitation on a cash out refinance is that you're limited to 80 percent of the as is value. With a renovation loan, I can go to 95 percent of the future value. Wow. I did so, not know that. Yeah. So renovation, you know, there are some trade-offs or whatnot. Like sure. I can only do renovation stuff, you know, so stuff that you're going to do to the house to improve that value. Right, right. You know, whereas a cash out, you know, you can pay the credit card, you know, pay the credit yeah. card off, buy yeah. a new car, you know, right. um, take your wife on the second honeymoon, you know, whatever, <laughs> right. whatever the case may be. But yeah. with renovations, I do have the power to go up to that that after improved well, but value. It, the, here's why. I mean, they're, they're, it, it, you know, lenders in their infinite wisdom are are recognizing that you're improving the asset, right? You're improving the asset, which improves your investment, which is better for you long-term. Like a Jaguar is fun, but it depreciates. Absolutely. The second you roll off the floor, right? So Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I'm not trying to diminish the second honeymoon. Like, you know, that's a pretty good investment too. But yeah, buddy, that's, that's fantastic. Well, Trey... I, I'm telling you, man, you got my heart rate up. I am fired up about this. I think this is something that every loan originator in America right now needs to be aware of, thinking of what a wonderful way 
to when you're putting together a business plan to begin to maybe you're not going to run at this like Trey has, but to be able to factor it in and feather it into a business plan that I need to understand this. I need to talk to the person in ops that can help me to verify. I need to know what my products are. And then I really need to start communicating to my database because you're right. There's a percentage of people out there that if they could picture a different you know, reality in their home, then it, it removes the inventory conversation, but they're going to be, be able to feel fantastic about their home. So, man, I see nothing but upside here, buddy. And I'm so glad that we've had this time. You know, let me say one other thing. Yeah. You know, you're talking about your database. A lot of people, when they look at their database, they're thinking about, okay, who can bring me that next deal? Who can bring yeah. me that next deal? And so they're looking at, you know, the clients that they've closed, and then they're looking at the buyer's agent. The right. Reno product also is a great tool to approach the listing side of the transaction because every single one of your listing agents have walked into a house and this is their first reaction. Oh, yeah. What a great use of space. Right. For, I've never seen a kitchen that's fire engine red. You know, they, they've walked in. They've walked into that. Yeah. No. How many cats do you own? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so the nice thing about it is, is my personal company and a lot of the companies out there, they have tons of renovation materials. I mean, like yeah. you can reach right over here, Bill. And can you see that? Yes, sir. Uh, Your dream kitchen could be a few weeks away. So this is just, this is just an oversized postcard or whatnot. You just attach your card on the back of it yep. and you just lay it on the kitchen table. It gives them an idea of what they can do. Well, you know what happens when a customer starts walking in and starts talking about, well, can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? Exactly. And the, and the, and the realtor is able to say, yes, you can. Yes, yeah. you can. Yes, you can. Well, guess what they've stopped talking about? Oh, yeah. They've yeah. stopped talking about the listing price. Yeah. They've stopped talking about, oh, well, I want to do this and I want to do this, but I'm going to have to lower the listing price, you know, or you're going to have to come down on the listing house for me to buy right. this house. They stopped talking about that. That's so good. So there are little small things that you can do as a listing agent to promote a home as a, you know, as a renovation possibility and it can make a world of difference. I mean, I have to tell you the That's story. That's a great idea. Yeah. I have to tell you the story. Sure. The third, the third renovation loan I ever did, okay, ever did ever, it, well, it came from a listing. The realtor called me and said, this house has been on the market for six weeks. It, it, it's only had four showings. The couple that had, the couple that had built the house were, you know, in their seventies when they built it. And mm -hmm. now they were in their like approaching 90. Wow. And the house hadn't been updated in 20 years. Yeah. So they, they did have the avocado green appliances. They did have shag carpet. Of course they know, did. Uh, and, you know, do you know what a runner bar, what I call a runner bar closet is, Bill? It's, uh, no. All right. So glass mirrored door that slides Yes. A shelf, a, a bar and floor. Yep. So I had a contractor buddy of mine go in and he just did a punch list, you know, new floors, yep. you know, redesign, you know, reconfigure closets, you know, and he just made me a punch list, yeah. put it on a piece of his letterhead and, and with a total. Then I did a financing worksheet, which almost every loan officer in the country can do. Sure. And showed them what a full list price and doing $60,000 worth of renovations did to the payment. Um, and took those two things, put them back to back, bought me a dollar 10 stand up from Staples <laughs> and stuck that in the middle of the kitchen table. That house had 16 showings in one week and got oh my goodness, four, man. Four, four full price offers. And so when the customer is sitting in front of me, yeah, you know, I was like, well, you know, you don't have to use the contractor. And they, you know, they looked at me like I had grown three heads <laughs> because they were like, why would we use somebody who yeah. has never been in the house? This guy's exactly been the house. what we want to do. Yeah. So 
so I mean, the listing agent got a full price offer. The contractor got sixty thousand dollars worth of business. I got I got a loan, you know. So there's a lot cut, of winning going on there. Yeah, that's, the a, that's a great story, man. Great. So, right, so, that's a great um, story, Trey, and it's a it's a perfect one to end with because that's the kind of that's the kind of story. If you get that into your head, you can begin to have this conversation now with real estate agents, with existing listings, with contractors. Like, start teeing these pieces of the puzzle up. And let's forget, you know, what it was like. It was pretty amazing. And I'm hoping if you were in the, in the industry in 2020, 2021, and, and fruit was falling into your basket from the trees, you know, my, my hope is you, you took good care of your bank account during that time, because now is the time to start thinking outside of the box a little bit in helping people to put the pieces together so that they can live in the dream home that they might already be in or potentially a property that they could buy, but they could buy it through their own lens. Imagine that. It's like it's like walking into a car dealership and ordering, you know, something custom. I ordered it. You probably know because you see me on social, but, you know, I ordered a, a new Jeep Wrangler about eight months ago, and it was actually in this market. It was cheaper to order it than it was to buy one off the lot because there was a premium price. I don't know. This reminds me a little bit of real estate, <laughs> right? And by the way, the Wrangler, the, the Wrangler looks really good, Bill. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. We're, we're loving that ride, man. It's only taken me a little over 60 years to get it. So it's, uh, it's pretty fun. But imagine if you can create that kind of emotion in a buyer, in a borrower, somebody who's already in that piece of property, and you can. So, Trey, you have been phenomenal today. Thank you so much for bringing this glimpse of something I think people are aware of but probably haven't been giving enough thought to. I think you've encouraged people. Thanks for hanging out with me today, brother. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. My pleasure. So, hey, if people want to reach you, what's the best way for them to find you? Email. I'm on all social media. Nice. Um, my cell phone number. I certainly don't mind anybody having that. It's uh, 704-813-3404. Emails, trey.perry at movement.com. So, appreciate uh, it, man. If you put your reno guy, yeah, uh, into the into the website, I'll, I'll pop up. So now, I, I just got to ask, man, every once in a while, you must have some people who are looking for something in Reno, Nevada. Am I right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so it's got to yeah. happen. Yeah. 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 I, and I, I tell people it, it, it it's spelled Reno, but it's pronounced Reno. So nice. And it's the, it's not the Southern twang that uh, that's doing that. Yeah, so. exactly. No, it's a legitimate pronunciation. Buddy, thank you so much for spending the time with us today. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.